All right. Um, this is CISS 243, um, Web Database Integration. What we'll do today is I will uh, introduce the, the class materials to you, and we'll start getting into the content. Um, one thing you, you may notice is, um, with the equipment up there, is that the, the, the lectures will be recorded and will be available on YouTube. The idea is, is that um, it allows you, if you miss a class, to, to, you know, to, see what, uh, to see what we've covered. This isn't quite the professional setup like there is downstairs, but at least you know, it is, it's better than nothing if you miss a class. Um, so uh, I'll be doing that, and it, it, seems, to, it seems to work out uh, uh, pretty well. Uh, about the only issue that I have is occasionally, you know, if I'm not really paying attention, I wander off and the video is of a white screen. So feel free to decorate this area of the screen before class starts. So at least people will have something interesting to look at if I happen to wander um, off a camera. Um, let me start by taking attendance. Let me go down and, and check everyone's here. I, I know most of you, but we'll... Uh, Let's see if there's anyone here I don't don't know or forgotten the name of or anything like that. Thomas Burge, Ian, Timothy, Cars. How would you how, how would course. you course? I say how would you pronounce it? I, I should say how do you pronounce it? <laughs> Susan, uh, Maxwell, okay. Richard Cancel not. Anita Phillips is here, Brian Porter not here, and Ashley is here. All right. I'm assuming you are all familiar with Angel, the course management tool. You all have had at least some classes have used it, so I won't focus on uh, the mechanics of how to use it, but instead I'll talk about where the stuff is. In, uh, for this class and, and how we will be using it in, uh, in, in this class. All right. Um, it, it's your responsibility to, to read through all the documents. I'm not necessarily going to um, read through every, every line, but I will hit the things that I consider most important. Um, and then you can ask questions, and then you can review them on your own time. So a few things will skip around. I'll have a few words to say and, and so on. but. Um, it's, it's your responsibility to read through everything. Let me pull up Angel on the screen.
things most relevant to you. The report allows you to check on your grades. The communicate it allows you to send me emails and receive emails from me. And the content is really where um, the action is, where most of the, the content um, is. Um, I, I urge you to check Angel between class sessions. So, you know, maybe check it on Wednesday and then check it a time or two between Thursday and the following Tuesday. Um, I post stuff to it um, of a lot of different varieties. Um, if someone has a question in class um, that, that I don't have an adequate answer for at that time, I'll do some research and I'll post, um, I'll post the, the, the answer um, that way. Um, if there's anything that changes, if a deadline changes, or if I'm going to miss a class, I'll post it. Um, and I also, you know, grade stuff via Angel, and you'll get your feedback uh, there. Um, I, I typically give people opportunities to rework their assignments, so, you know, it, it, it's good just to, to, you know, get the feedback, and if you need to make any revisions, uh, being able to do that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, to kind of start from the bottom and go up, all right? Um, discussion forums is simply a discussion forum. You know, consider that as a place to ask questions between class that you think other people from the class would benefit uh, for hearing. If you, if you think it's something specific to your situation, then it's best to send an email. Um, the bottom line is don't agonize about it, all right? Either send an email or post it to the discussion board, all right? Whatever you need to do, make sure you get your questions answered. Semester project. There is a project in this class uh, that is done in two phases. Um, there's a design phase where you go through the exercise of deciding what your content's going to be, deciding what the database is going to be structured as, uh, and, and so on. And then there's the actual build phase where you actually create your project. Um, we're not going to talk about this in details now. We should talk about this within a week or two. Um, as far as for now goes, be sure to read through the, the instructions um, for, for the project. Project is an opportunity for you to put everything together uh, that we've done in this class. Now, I've had students say, um, and, you know, fairly so, I have to say, it was a fair comment, that designing the project was difficult because we haven't covered everything by the time the design is due. And that's true. But remember, to design something, you don't necessarily have to know how it's going to be implemented. Um, you can sort of take on faith that as long as you're thinking about something that isn't too outrageous, like if you're talking about having a form that updates the database, well, yeah, we're going to cover that. We may not have covered that, or we may have started covering that at the time the design is due. But you can pretty much take on faith that by the time the design is completed, you'll know how to do that. Um, if there's any doubt, if, there, if there's any question as to the functionality you're planning for it, whether it, you know, whether it is appropriate for this class or, or you know, whether, whether it's within the scope of the class, then, then by all means ask me and, and we can work through it. Um, you you, you want to jump on this, uh, you know, relatively quickly. So read through this and and get an understanding of what um, what the project is about. We will cover that again in more detail within a week or two. Assignments. There's a place for the assignments, the instructions, and um, the Dropbox where you post your completed work. Lectures and examples, this is where the videos from the lecture will be placed as long, along with, uh, if necessary, any files that we used uh, in the class if we've set up a project or whatever. Uh, oftentimes I'll upload uh, the, the sample code as well. That's particularly useful um, if you're viewing the videos and the screen might be a little hard to see. I, I typically uh, try to remember to uh, make the font bigger uh, on the screen. But in case I don't, or even sometimes with the font, you may have trouble seeing exactly what it says. That's why it's good to have the, the example as well. You can hear what I'm saying in general terms, but you, can re you don't have to rely on 
uh, being able to read the screen, you can you can actually look at the the actual code to, to see what's going on for it. Copyright and fair use in education. I do this in all my classes. It is a statement, uh, a little summary of um, what the law is concerning using copyrighted material within the context of educational projects. There's different copyright law for educational projects than, than there is for commercial projects or even for personal projects. You know. Uh, without permission, uh, an organization can't simply take a, pay, uh, a picture off the web and post it on their website. You know, even in a personal context, let's say you had a fan page for the Cleveland Browns, you couldn't go on the Cleveland Browns website, take a picture, and post it. That's copyright infringement because you don't have permission to do that. However, it's a little different in an educational context, and especially when we get to the project, it's likely like you is likely that you might want to have some images um, to, to to be displayed on your page. And in that case, uh, you know, where do you get the images from? Well, I don't expect you to go out and take your own images and all that. That's not the purpose of this class. You're certainly welcome to if you want, but. Um, you can use images off of other websites, provided you pay attention to copyright law, and you realize that this is only the copyright law with regards to uh, educational projects. In a nutshell, and you can read through the, the full description of it, the copyright law says, first of all, you have to get it from a legal source. So, for example, it may not be relevant for this class, but let's say in a multimedia class, if you were going to use a song, you would have to purchase that song. You, you couldn't simply download it uh, from somewhere. Right? So you'd have to obtain the materials legally. And then you're limited to what you use. In other words, you couldn't use the whole song. You could use, I think, up to a 30 second or 10% uh, of, of the audio. And then lastly, you need to give attribution of, of where you got it from and, and who is the copyright holder. Probably most relevant for this class is uh, our images, because uh, you might want to use images on your web page. In which case, um, assume that you're, you know, make sure you're getting them from who does own the copyright of that. Um, make sure that you don't take too many, and I think there's a number per artist that you're allowed to have, so you can consider that per website. And be sure you give attribution. You know, put put a, a credit on the bottom of the page saying images from. ClevelandBrowns.com or whatever, all right. But you can read through that on your own. Uh, my point is, is it's not like uh, I grade your assignments along with a lawyer that that's you know that, that's checking and making sure that everything's legit. But I, I think it is an important issue, and it's one that we want to respect and we want to pay attention to. So, uh, if you have any questions on this, let me know. Generally speaking, if you're taking a couple of images off of a site, you're okay provided it's a legit site that owns the copyright to them, and provided that you give credit to that. And, and that, should, that should have you covered. All right, the last topic uh, that we're going to talk about before we get into the course material proper is the syllabus. And, and I'll hit the high points uh, for that, and uh, we'll go from there. Your first assignment, by the way, I will... I probably will come back to by the by the end of class. Let me scratch that. By the end of class, I hope to have the syllabus open. Oh, I don't know what ha what this is. If I hit cancel, then boom, it's downloaded. Does that at home too? I spoke too soon. Oh, there we go. All right. Stuff on the top is contact information. Um, read between the lines here for, for this. The point is that there's a lot of ways to get a hold of me. 
Email is probably the best way to get a hold of me between classes. And there's email available within Angel, and you can also email me at my regular LC email account. All right. And that's the preferred way, and that's probably the best way from your viewpoint, um, meaning that you will get uh, the response probably quicker that way than any other, me uh, any other method. You can phone me if you want, but I only uh, respond to phone when I'm on campus. I typically don't check my voicemail off campus. So you're probably better off emailing me, but I do recognize that there are some occasions when, when you can't email me, in, in which case you feel free to call the phone. All right, so that's two ways that you can contact me between class. What are some of the other ways that you can contact me, specifically if you're having trouble with the assignment? Well, you can certainly ask questions in lab. All right, you can ask questions in lecture. If you look around, even, you know, there's a couple people missing. Even if they were here, we have less than 10 people in this class. All right. Um, Therefore, we can, we can give uh, good individual attention if you're running into problems or if you're running into questions. So by all means, ask. All right? Um, it's good sometimes people try to figure things out for themselves. I don't want to discourage that. But by the same token, you need to be able to recognize when you're spinning your wheels and not really making any progress and, and having a hard time. And then you need to raise the flag for help. All right? And that, that's the same in the classroom and that's the same in the job situation. If you had a project, yeah, ideally you'll be able to work through a project independently. But you don't want to sit there making no progress for weeks at a time, spinning your wheels, you know, ask someone for help. Um, in some cases, I may not give you a direct answer, but instead give you an answer that will help you discover the right answer, and that's fair. Um, I, I may direct you to web resources, I may re direct you to something we talked about in class, and so on. But I will always offer some kind of assistance, all right? Always offer some kind of assistance if, if you ask a question, in, either in class or in lab. Um, if you don't want to do that or you feel you have additional help or you, you require additional help, two options are office hours, all right, which I do not have defined as of yet, but I should have defined over the next week or so. They'll, they'll be uh, in effect starting week two. All right, so you can come to my office for office hours. Or you're welcome to come to any of my other classes' lab sessions. All right, you know, this class has a lecture and a lab, you know, lecture for a while, the lab uh, immediately following. All my other classes have that as well, all right? And I have a Monday and, uh, Monday through Thursday, I have a daytime class and an evening class. So pretty much regardless of your schedule, there, there's likely to be some time that you could come in outside of this class's lab to get assistance. All right. And I make that offer in all my other classes, too. So you may see someone in our lab that isn't enrolled in this class because maybe they're in an online section of a class or maybe um, they're in one of my other campus classes and, and they're coming in for extra assistance. So if you want to do that, let me know and I can give you the exact days and times and room numbers uh, to come in and we can figure that out. The wild card... Um, is if nothing else works, just talk to me and we'll figure something out. Um, on occasion, I've called students on the phone, you know, if, if, if their, their, their responsibilities prohibit them from coming down during office hours or whatever, I can give you a call. We can chat online. We, you know, we'll figure something out. Uh, me and I think most professors are, are willing to meet you halfway if you put forth the effort in reaching out when you feel you need assistance, you know. It's hard to gauge sometimes, just looking at people in lab or in lecture, how much of it is connecting. But you should have a pretty good idea how much is connecting. All right? And feel free to ask if, if, there, if you're in any doubt that you're, you're having trouble with, uh, with an issue. All right. Next couple of sections relate to the um, description and outcomes of the course. 
this really is, is what's driving us. This is what you, uh, what is expected that you get out of the class. When you leave the class, you should be familiar with these sort of things. This is the first term. The examples that we'll be doing will be in C-sharp as opposed to in VB. All right. Um, I don't anticipate a huge problem with that. Um, and any issues that you have, we can work through it. I mean, there's people who've been in this class that never have done any VB programming that have been successful for it. So um, it's an opportunity for you to either develop or, or uh, to, to gain some skills in this area. Uh, most places that use a .NET platform do not use VB.NET. Um, I, I think at some point that was the case. Uh, it's evolved over time to where C Sharp is, is the dominant language in that area. So we're, we're simply moving with the times. You know, it'll make you more employable to, to, to have this under your belt. Storage media. Yes, you can bring in diskettes, I think. I don't know if our machines can read them, but you, you can bring them in. You can try. Um, I really should probably go in and change that in, in future. Uh, um, what else? Uh, what else can you bring in? What, what were those old oh, zip drives? I'm surprised they don't have that. You know, I'll bring in your cassette player uh, and run it through the serial port. Yes. CD. CD. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, any of that? Actually, CD would work. Although I'm not sure if those machines can burn, but whatever. At any rate, and if you've worked in a lab class here, you're familiar with the fact that the the machines in the business uh, division are set with deep freeze. So that means every time they reboot, you lose. Um, what's on the disk. So you need to take a copy of your stuff with you. And again, I would assume most of you have uh, USB drives. If not, you can, or if you've forgotten it or whatever, you can email it to yourself. You can use Dropbox, not to be confused with a Dropbox and Angel, but the, the, uh, the, the, the website and application called Dropbox and so on. Yes? I haven't had any issues uploading programs to Angel and putting them into the files with uh, memory or anything. The only problem you might have is maybe with the big project, I'm thinking. But other than that, I've been able to save them up to Angel and just get them from anywhere. Absolutely. And you can do that as well. Each person has a certain amount of user space in Angel, and you can upload it there. All right. The bottom line is whatever you decide to do, you got to have a copy of it. All right. This is your class. I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, my only job is to make sure that you connect with the material. All right. um, it doesn't do me any good to cover something if, if it doesn't make it through. So um, me talking about something uh, and teaching something isn't the focus. You hearing and learning it is the focus. Um, Here's a list of college policies. Please review. Late work, I reserve the right to deduct for late work. I also reserve the right not to deduct for late work. If I know that the person's been working on something and making progress and they've been working with me in lab and emailing me questions, and if despite all that a student is, is a little late on assignment, I'm likely not to deduct for it. If students simply disappear and week five start turning in week one's assignments, then I'm, I am likely to deduct for that. Um, this uh, syllabus does not constitute a contract. To maintain the integrity of the course, the instructor reserves the right to change the syllabus and any of its contents at time by notifying the stu students verbally or by written addendum. So you might come in Thursday and instead this is a, a class on anthropology. No. I won't take it that far. I won't make that big of a change. It's always amazing. Whenever you see legal disclaimers on something, which I, I'm pretty sure they told us to put that language in our syllabus, like verbatim. Um, whenever you see legal disclaimers like that, you know that someone in the past has had a problem with it. Um, I, I went with my friend to a storage unit where he's storing some old car parts and all that. And he said the agreement that he had to sign with the storage unit was like, you're not allowed to store exotic reptiles in a storage unit. You're not allowed to store plants which are pro prohibited by the U.S. Department of Agriculture in the storage unit. And he just ran down the list of all the things he had to sign on there. And he's like, you know, someone was storing stacks of exotic reptiles in one of these. And they came in and they, they said, well, it wasn't on the waiver that we couldn't. 
so they had to go in and, and edit the waiver, and everyone had to promise not to do that. So again, every time every time I see one of these uh, sort of disclaimers, I wonder like you know, okay, you know, who raised a fuss? Where you know, and so therefore we have to have that on here. All right. Um, Projects 40 points, homework 60 points, adds up to 100 points. If you, uh, if the assignments don't add up to 60 points, it'll be prorated. So, you know, a lot of times it's not exactly 60. It'll be end up 64 or 58 or something like that. I'll just prorate it to make it 60 points. All right, 90, 80, 70 for A, B, and C, and so on. And then here is the schedule. The idea is that you will read the material before coming to class. All right. So you're all behind. All right. Unless you have read the material, in which case, well, good job. All right. Any questions about any of that material? Yes. Yeah, I always have a hard time in November, um, you know, with the holidays coming and all that. There's a lot of things going on. So, yeah, I am usually all off in November. But, but my real question is, does that mean the project is still due on December 10th? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I did notice that the other day because typically what I do is I, I get the dates for the college catalog and I, I like, add seven, add seven, add seven, you know. And, and I think at one point I was off on, on, on the date. So we, we can make adjustments for that. Um, let me rephrase that. I believe the, the project is still due the, the 10th. Um, other questions? All right. Let's get into the material proper. And our job for the rest of the class is to cover two main things, all right? Our first job is to talk in conceptual terms about what we're going to do in this class and how it differs from your basic web development that you may have done in CISS 216, all right? With plain old HTML, CSS, and that sort of thing. So that's our first job. How is this different than, than that? You know, how is this different than, you know, how are the web pages we're developing, which are called dynamic pages, different than what we developed in CISS 216, the intro to web development, which are called static pages. So that's the, that's the first thing. Um, it's important to understand that, all right? And it's important for a bunch of reasons, and, and we'll go through it, and through the course we'll, we'll, we'll go through it as well. But it's important to really understand that, because if you sort of like gloss over that and don't really understand what's going on, a lot of things will seem like a mystery to you. A lot of things will be weird, all right? And, and, and you, you won't be able to, to quite catch why things happen a certain way. But if you really understand what's really going on, with dynamic web pages, then that really clears up a lot of questions, and, and, and the way things work become a lot more straightforward, and, and you don't you're not really stuck with the mysteries that, that you have um, in other environments. All right. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to take a little tour of Visual Studio. Now, how many of you have used Visual Studio before in other classes? Okay, so. Everyone at least, you know, knows what the words Visual Studio means and, and may have actually clicked on an icon that had those words underneath. Okay, good. All right, so, we, we, you know, we, we, we're, we're somewhat familiar with that. We're not, we're really just kind of starting out with it today um, um, in, the, in the project today. Um, we're not really, we're not going to really exploit all of its features and all, all of its benefits. We're really kind of easing into it and taking a tour for it. So that's our two tasks today, and I'll, I'll sort of keep an eye on the time. Um, I want to leave at least 15 minutes or so to talk about 
uh, Visual Studio. So I'll, I'll talk about the conceptual stuff for about a, a half hour. Uh, and we'll keep coming to this. And I'm going to draw, you know, one of my 